And you are? Batgirl. That's not awfully PC. What about that person? <laughs> In 1997, the film Batman and Robin didn't go over too well with audiences and critics. However, this film served as the IP for two fantastic roller coasters for 21 years and counting, with the debut of two launch coasters named Flight of Fear in 1996 at King's Island and King's Dominion, Premier Rides impressed the industry with a new launch technology. This would grab the attention of Six Flags, who was looking for two new launch coasters of their own. Two years later, in 1998, Two models of Mr. Freeze would open, one at Six Flags Over Texas, and the other at Six Flags St. Louis. Batman's greatest nemesis is now yours. Mr. Freeze at Six Flags St. Louis is now open. It'll blast you from zero to 70 in four seconds, then rocket you 23 stories straight up. And when you get to the top, you've got to go back down, backwards. Mr. Freeze at Six Flags St. Louis. Six Flags! You in? Are you out? Gotta love that edgy late 90s end title card with the screaming of Six Flags! and slogan that's blatantly ripping off Nintendo. Our daring reporter Melanie Shaw volunteered to test it out. She joins us now live from Arlington from a roller coaster that claims to be the fastest and tallest in Texas. No, I can't hear anything. It's called Mr. Freeze and Melanie joins us now live from this wild ride. Melanie? All right, Mel and Jay, we are live here at the Mr. Freeze ride, and believe me, George Kiyama is here with me. We are scared out of our wits. It's going to be going at 70 miles per hour through a tunnel in less than four seconds, and we will be going up 23 stories. This whole ride will take less than a minute. Okay, folks, let's hit it. Let's get... Let's get this ride going. Come on, George. You ready, man? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, let's go. I've done it before, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It's been an unbelievable day here. This will be great. Melanie, I think it's waiting for this to, to get going. Wow. Yikes. Both Inceptions of Mr. Freeze were originally planned for a 1997 opening to debut alongside the film Batman and Robin, but would be delayed until the 1998 season due to troubles with the LIM launch system. I had to dive deep for a little more information on this, and the rumor is that the metal fins on the side of the cars collided with the LIM launch system, and there were also just months of the ride testing and getting rollbacks. Click the link in the description to this mountain of construction updates. It's massive. LIM stands for Linear Induction Motor Technology, and Premier Rides was the first company to use this technology on their roller coasters. The metal fins on the side of the trains of Mr. Freeze are pushed by the force of a magnetic wave provided by the LIM, and also a fuck ton of electricity. Mr. Freeze is a shuttle loop coaster that is quite an evolutionary step up from the 1977 launching shuttle loop by Schwarzkopf. Instead of a vertical loop, Mr. Freeze sports a large inverted top hat. Instead of being launched by the drop of a weight, Mr. Freeze will launch you with the aforementioned LIM technology. Because Mr. Freeze navigates through twists and turns backwards, it was quite important that the track was designed to be as smooth as possible since riders cannot use visual cues in order to brace themselves. This is a common issue with Vekoma's boomerang models which tend to have more jerky, sudden transitions. The Mr. Freeze coasters would undergo a few changes over time. The riding experience was made more comfortable for riders in 2002 when the hard over-the-shoulder restraints were switched out for lap bars, eliminating any cause for the riders' heads to collide with the harness. Mr. Freeze at Six Flags Over Texas would receive a new paint job in 2007 that changed the track from blue to red. The St. Louis version would remain entirely blue. In 2012, both coasters were rebranded as Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast. Six Flags introduces Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast. Pulse pounding peril has just taken a giant leap backwards? Both parks would accompany the reopening with their own special guest appearance. In St. Louis, an appearance by David Freeze of the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, growing up in St. Louis, um, you know, Six Flags was a big part of my childhood. Uh, coming, coming up here, you know, summer after summer, you know, I had the season pass, you know, every year for, for a long time. And, um, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, I love roller coasters and, you know, I, um, you know, you know, you know, you know, and then, you know, Mr. Freeze, obviously a great roller coaster, you know, but now it's going in reverse, you know. My favorite part about it now is, you know, when, when, when you know, it's time to go back and, uh, you know, it's pretty cool how, how it takes off and how it finishes up, you know. 
And over Texas, a concert by Vanilla Ice. Oh my god. Say ice, ice, baby! <laughs> I have been referring to this ride simply as Mr. Freeze and will continue to do so to save myself the headache, or brain freeze rather, from saying Mr. Freeze reverse blast so many times. The trains were turned around to face the opposite direction for the 2012 rebranding. Originally, the ride launched the trains forwards, and the trains would navigate backwards on the return to the station after the vertical spike. Now the launch is backwards, and the return after the spike is forwards. And can't, can we just talk for a second about the commercial for the rebranding of Mr. Freeze to Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast? Like, okay, sure, some parts of a 1998 commercial don't really necessarily age well, but I just feel like the 2012 advertisement is all around pretty terrible. There's a lot of emphasis on how now you can ride it backwards. Backwards? But you could already ride it backwards. It already went backwards. They should have put more emphasis on how the ride launches backwards rather than now you can go backwards. Like what the what what the fuck does that mean? And on top of that, Six Flags really likes using these stuck scream samples, which are hilarious, and I use them as gags. The music isn't fitting, I don't understand the music choice. Six Flags could use a little bit of help in their commercials. People feel split on the 2012 rebranding. I'm personally a fan of the current view you get facing down on the vertical spike. However, the name of the ride is not very good. It's been commonly pointed out that the name and logo both resemble a type of Mountain Dew drink or something like that. But as far as rebranding goes, it could be worse. Review section. This is a review of Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at Six Flags St. Louis in the year 2019. I have not written the version at Six Flags Over Texas. These rides are not 100% exact clones. Actually, the layouts are mirrored from each other. Other than that, the ride experiences are most likely very similar. You enter the queue through this really cool sign and kinda cute but worn out looking ice cream cone guy. The premise is that you enter an old abandoned ice cream factory that Mr. Freeze uses as a hideout. From there, you navigate past some terrible looking switchbacks that I hope never Never have to get used anymore. The queue then navigates to an enclosed section that brings you up some stairs to the station. This enclosed section does not look very good on the inside or out. The worn aesthetic on the outside works, but it's so worn and faded that it looks like it was made with the intention to save money on upkeep. The interior has these very cheap walls that are fiberglass reinforced plastic. Maybe they thought it was theming because it's vaguely ice-like in appearance, but I really can't justify their decision to use these walls in the queue. Then you get to the station and see actual theming. It doesn't blow you away or anything, but it gets the job done. There are pipes with icicles hanging from them, and it's a decent effort. These coasters have two trains, which is very rare for a shuttle coaster. This is made possible by the dual loading station and the transfer track. This ideally helps with ride capacity, which is great for a large thrill coaster like this. But on the day that I rode Mr. Freeze, there was only one train ops. But it was still cool to see the transfer track anyways. Everyone gets really excited once the track starts moving, and that's pretty cool to see. The station also has small storage bins for each row, which I greatly appreciate. Sure, they're small plastic bins zip-tied to a railing, but I'll take it over a locker fee. The reverse launch is pretty cool. I'm not convinced it's more thrilling than a forwards launch, but I'm sure that launching backwards adds a new level of anxiety for some riders. An alarm sounds when the coaster launches, which is a really cool use of sound. But sometimes you won't hear the alarm, and sometimes you will. This launch is 0 to 70 in 3.8 seconds. Premier rides increase the acceleration rate considerably from Flight of Fear, which has a launch of 0 to 54 in 4 seconds. It's a good launch with a decent kick and great speed, but it isn't an intense launch by any means. Then you go into the most forceful part of the ride, the inverted top hat. You enter it to the right at St. Louis and to the left at Over Texas. Again, these have a mirrored layout. The bottom of this top hat is fairly sharp, and you feel a lot of positive G's here. After the top hat, you go into a huge overbank turn. This overbank turn is not very forceful. It's a little janky, but still smooth enough to be comfortable. Not bad, but there is room for improvement. Last, you enter this huge vertical spike. Very unique to this ride, instead of entering a chain lift, you get pushed higher up by the LIM. This isn't a launch sensation, but a push. It's a unique sensation that's especially incredible in the back row, where you'll be suspended nearly 200 feet up in the air. 
If I could compare it to anything, it's a little comparable to the Intamin Impulse Coaster Holding Break, as the Vertical Spike just kinda dropkicks gravity right in the jaw. Then you descent the Vertical Spike with some floater airtime, not much, a little bit, and travel the track's course again. But get this! Now you better ride it forward! Closing thoughts. I give Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast a strong 8 out of 10. As much as I love the Schwarzkopf Shuttle Loop, I have a new favorite Shuttle Looper in Mr. Freeze. The top hat is a fantastic inversion which provides 4 moments of strong G's. The vertical spike is a one of a kind with the LIMs, and provides an insane view from the back staring nearly 200 feet down at the ground. There are a few drawbacks, none of which are a big deal. The overbank turn doesn't serve much purpose beyond being a turnaround. The track is getting a tad rough with age. I said that it was smooth, but that's mostly just regarding the track transitions. The actual track itself does feel a little bumpy. Also, the Q theming. It's obviously nowhere near like Batman the Ride Q theming, like Six Flags at Great America. This is a great ride though, I think those are all just nitpicky points. And I would say, yeah, it's a great ride, and maybe even a little bit underrated. So yeah, that's a little overview and review of Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at Six Flags St. Louis. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new here, and remember to keep it PC for Batman. Patrick is a nervous boy. We heard him screaming like a girl. I think he was worse than us. That's not PC.